Hello everyone, welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC. I've been using the borer today to trim the ends on some boiler pipe that I've cut and I realised I haven't ever done a walk around of the old borer to show you what it does and how it does it. It's a bit of an antique 1966 model. It was when they first updated um, machine tools with the Miracle Optometric system. A little bit weird, it's like a, an archaic DRO. It has a scale here on the uh, saddle and one back here on the head. It's a mirror and strings magical system. There's a vernier scale across the machine tool that's lit by a background light and you have a prismatic uh, looking at the light source and you can actually see the vernier moving along. And at first I thought it was marked off in um, tenths of an inch and then I realised that really crumbly and not in good condition off to one side there's a second vernier scale that brings it down to a thou and you can actually split the thou a little bit. I'll see if I can get a decent view in through one of the windows later on. A uh, very interesting part of this, it's got a bit of an American idea. The power feed for the saddle comes from a separate motor down here and you don't get so many thou per turn of the spindle as you would expect. You've got, I don't know what they're marked off in, but it's 0.71 and 1.7 marked on the feed here. A little gearbox inside too and a dog clutch. And back here you've got a nameplate with what speed you're in, what number you've got the feed in, and then it gives you how many thou per turn the feed weight will actually be. Bit of an unusual way to do it, but hey, it works for them. Uh, this model is fitted with a square rotating table up on the top. It's got uh, dogs that lock the table in, and I'll show you later on the dogs go into a lead slot, so you spin the table 90 degrees or 180, lock it in with the dogs, and you are spot on. Uh, very, very good system for boring the gearbox from one side, spin it around, come in from the other side, and you're in exactly the right place. Now also there are some squaring blocks up on top of the toolbox, which you'll see later on, that you drop into the T-slots and push your workpiece up against it. And once again, you're dead on parallel or at 90 degrees at the slots, whichever you prefer. So a couple of good features there. It's a very old electrical control cabinet. We'll zoom in later on. You, can, you have to start the machine with the feed already turned on. It's not supposed to be selected while the machine's running. And you can select the coolant pump on or off. Uh, you've got forward, forward and reverse on the motor panel and you've got a three-speed motor, a big electric pancake motor down under the belly of it. Up here you've got high and low ratio and I think the maximum is 540 and the minimum is 45. So it's a reasonable feed range. Uh, I bought it originally because I built my first boiler and uh, used the radial alarm drill to drill a tube plate and then thought I'll have a look at how much longer a boiler I can do and <laughs> I can go about that much higher. So pretty well anything bigger than a Sweet William boiler is not really suitable for the radial alarm. Whereas with a small HBM like this, you crank the table along, you can put a one and a half metre, two metre long boiler up on top of the table, balance quite a lot off the back and if you need a roller support under it and you've got a fair work envelope in here. And one thing I found very handy is you can drill a hole and then face that hole and you can face all the holes on the back head and they'll all be in the same plane. They might not be the same height but at least they're all going to come out with fittings in the same direction and not splaying out in all directions. So enough yapping from out uh, range now. I'll bring you in a little bit closer and give you a better look at what this machine can do. Okay, we're back in a little bit closer. I'll try not to get between the light and what you're looking at. Down the bottom here we have the electric motor to feed the table. And here we have a traverse or longitudinal lever. It just works a Morse cable down to a reverse selector on the gearbox so you can feed the table crosswise or you can feed it longitudinally and here we have the manual feed for table traverse selecting gearbox for your different feed rates with a neutral uh, saddle lock it's not the saddle moving along and here's a manual longitudinal wheel I'll move you over a little bit further in a sec well, I've still got a reasonable view. I'll swing you up for a look at the head. 
on the top here is the high and low range selector and it's quite a big difference it's about three to one I've got the facing head on it at the moment with the facing cutter uh, this slide here traverses across the facing head there's a feed from the back that I'll try to get in amongst all the swarf to show you it drives a quill shaft there's a small bevel gear inside here and a half inch BSF bronze feed screw that turns inside a nut on this and runs the slide backwards and forwards we have a little V piece that can slide into that sliding piece when it's dead centered and uh, that makes it easy to put the snap bar on in the right place and we have a couple of clamping plates on the head so wherever you want to clamp the boring tool you can and get a bit more rigidity but you can also clamp it reasonably stiffly in the central position yeah. on the side of the gearbox we have a clamp either side that clamps onto this strip so you undo those clamps crank the hand wheel and the head goes up and down it's got I think just over 12 inches or 300 millimeter vertical travel it's got about 350 crosswise and I think 450 longitudinal uh, all up you can work on and face I think it's an 18 inch cube that it was built around okay I'll move you up a little bit closer and have a bit more of a look okay here's a zoom in on the facing head you can see the knurled knob uh, centered down the bottom that allows you to slide a little V block in and out of the main slide in the central position so you very accurately come back to home and a close up on the high and low speed knob up there I'll move over again and show you a bit more that's a picture of the feed and speed chart uh, self explanatory very well laid out it's just high and low range uh, position of the motor switch position of the table feed the RPM you operate at and it's 45 to 510 and how many thou per revolution of the spindle you get as an effective feed rate so fairly good to use just to the left of that we have this weird looking window that's where you're looking to use that part of the optometric measuring system I'll try to set the tripod up as a monopod later on put power on the machine and let you have a bit of a squeeze in there it's very interesting uh, very accurate means I believe these were used to build a lot of machine tools actually and uh, gearboxes for trucks and uh, larger cars so one well truly into the automotive industry uh, this came from Mackay TAFE College originally and an agent beat me at bid and then doubled his money when he sold it beneath the rotten bugger but that's just life I suppose that's the crank wheel for rise and fall of the power head and there we have the main motor panel a stop start switch up the top and a switch for the 32 volt machine light in between forward and reverse of the table motor and down the bottom uh, the switch on the left gives you um, power with coolant or power without coolant and reverse or forward with or without coolant and the switch on the right is low medium or high speed electrical now it saves on gearboxes but when you're in low speed it doesn't have a lot of guts uh, people don't realize that these machines are very limited you're not supposed to power feed a drill bigger than one inch Morse taper if you try and take a three millimeter depth of cut with it it just stalls out it doesn't have a lot of guts but for what it was intended for it suits the purpose very well okay I'll move the tripod along and put some power on here's a look in at the side of the optometric system I can't get you in any closer than that or the whole lot will fall ass overhead here um, the scale actually moves up and down and the center line remains static so what you're reading off there is the center height of the spindle above the table bit of a strange way to do it but uh, reasonably accurate you can see we've got 4.2 inches there next one down is 4.3 so it's 0.1 inch divided by 10 divisions and then what you can't see is over on this side that's very poorly lit unless you've got your eyeball right up on the screen there is another vernier scale down there marked off in thousands of an inch so back in the day that would have been not quite as accurate as a DRO but as accurate as a vernier can be it's not too bad a system really 
try not to break anything and crank the camera up again. Up here we have the little lever for the forward and reverse on the surfacing head. That big knob there is for manually operating the surfacing. And also just down there is a little wheel that whizzes around and shows you which direction you're moving in and how far you move. So it's got fairly simple controls. I'll turn you off again and show you the vernier for the table. Okay, here's a close-up look of the way covers on the spindle end of the carriage. Uh, these are covers that slide backwards and forwards with the carriage to try and keep the swarf off the ways. Quite a good idea. And this vernier there um, measures the table of the travel. That's the moving part and that's the vernier side. And it's quite easy to put a bit of a marker pen or something on there to show where you want to finish up. And to the left you can just see the bellows or concertina for uh, the feed shaft up through the head there. So a reasonably well made machine although I did find quite a lot of inconsistencies when I pulled it apart uh, to repair the head. Uh, gear was stripped inside the main gearbox there. Okay I'll take you uh, right down towards the tailstock end. Well, oh first I'll show you the tailstock, that's a good idea. Hiding on the floor in the darkest part of the shed that's the rear steady for line boring. You can put a boring bar up between the snout bar holder and the back of the um, way here and it run a three quarter or one inch or inch and a quarter bar with through holes drilled similar to line boring on an earth moving bucket. Uh, quite a good idea actually. A very very sturdy piece of cast iron. I think you could do some pretty accurate work with it. And down the bottom you can see the clamping knob to clamp it down onto the ways. So I'll put you up to the face where you look straight down the line of the borer. Here's one of the reasons I like the Kearns borer so much. It's just so easy to clamp things onto that tail. As long as you can fit it within that work envelope. And don't forget the head goes up about 6 or 7 inches higher than that. Um, it's a slow working machine but it just makes it so easy to clamp things. Matter of fact I've realised now doing these border tubes I have to make some much larger strap clamps. But all in all sturdy. Uh, good for what I'm doing, but I wouldn't think an industrial machine. Move you around a bit more. Okay, this is one of the squaring blocks I spoke about early, earlier, and you can use this idea on any milling machine. A really robust piece of steel that fits neatly into the T-slot. You can bring your work up against it, and it's going to be parallel to the slots, or you can use your square off the back put two of these up and then bring your vice or the workpiece up against the stops. So extremely rigid. A really good bit of work and very very quick for setup. And also if I just lift the camera a touch you can see one of the V'd out sections in the table. So if you rotate that 90 degrees the side box just drops straight into the V section there and you're accurate. Very very well done. When I first bought the machine I couldn't rotate the table so I did my best to lift it and that took me a couple of weekends to free it from the sub table and it was just about a half a millimetre of rust all the way through underneath it had never been off the machine. So it was a shit of a job to clean it but also I couldn't lift it all the way off the spigot. I had to try and clean underneath with about a three quarter inch gap. I got it to I think reasonable condition. and. Down here is a very, very early edition of a one-shot oiler. Fill it with oil through the cap there, pull the handle once and it oils all the way it's in one shot. So I'll get behind the camera again and show you the toolbox. This is the genuine factory toolbox that comes with the machine. I'll swing the doors open in a second, give you a look inside. Up on top we have a selection of borer tooling. A uh, little snout bar and a snout bar holder, the larger snout bar after that, a Morse taper socket that fits inside the snout bar and next to that is a small milling chuck that goes in the snout bar holder. Over the back is a few items that I've built myself and right over the back there is a large extension which is a welded shank 
one end Morse tape at the other and it can be reversed. So I can use it for extensions for uh, magnetic drills etc. And there's a bracket that came with the current. I've got absolutely no idea what it does. But I'll sneak in there now, open it up and you can have a look inside. This is typical of an old machine tool, tool kit, uh, especially something from Pommy Land. Inside there, yes, we can get a bit of a focus. There's some snout bars and other tooling. Okay, I'll swing you. And here's a little slide in, slide out cabinet that keeps the spanners for the machine. Complete with a little felt box to keep your <laughs> open enders. Mr. King Dick spanners, which are quite a good pommy brand. And your other keys for the machine. Well done. Worse like this part of the cabinet's been robbed, almost nothing in it now. Bit of a shame. Okay, I'll drop you down and come back for a look inside. Now these machines are not just versatile because of what they can do, they're versatile because of the tooling that comes with it. So there's the three boom bars that go between the facing chuck and the tailstock. Uh, and they're all uh, usable with a good system. They have a drive key at the a snout bar holder end, cross drilled at convenient locations and high speed steel tool bit slots in and is held by a grub screw and also there's bushes so you can move up from the three quarter to the one inch the one inch to the inch and a quarter just swap the bushes around and they go straight into the same holders uh, down the bottom a couple of big angle plates the left hand one being a cast probably a factory currents plate and a fabricated one after that and then over in the corner just miscellaneous crap with every machine to really get a bit of junk. Some will be useful one day, but you know, I've had this thing for quite a few years now and it was inoperable for about two years while I was getting gears done, etc. for it. Uh, it's one hell of a nice machine tool and one reason I like it is it's very, very sturdy. Uh, it's absolute solid lump of cast iron. Well, I hope you enjoyed your little look around my Kearns Type S Bora. It's an interesting machine and even with the very vague workshop manual uh, I learned how to use it and that did take a while. Not being a machinist by trade it was uh, something new to me. I had a few accidents. I had a piece of Dura bar, 180 diameter up on here. I was trying to face a uh, straight bit on the edge of it because it's not really easy to clamp. And first three hits and it went over my left shoulder. I couldn't believe the way the clamps just fell apart. There were four clamps holding it and it just rotated against the fly cutter and disappeared. Very close to an accident on one of my first jobs here. So I've enjoyed showing you around. Uh, if you've got any questions, put them up there in comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm no expert on horizontal borers, but as I said, it's got quite a big work area. That's only one of the reasons why I like it. So if you like today's issue, like and subscribe and see you next weekend with a bit of luck.